Thank you for some thank you for tuning into the Dice of Battle with you and Happy New Year as well. Maybe I should probably say the word hi because I've been looking at at Natalie Tran's YouTube channel called Community Channel, who sadly has been suffering from some harsh times on YouTube there because um, vlogging the Dice of vlogging uh, basically seems to be dead, and only those who were you know given keys to the kingdom of about to have their say now, which is, you know, quite saddening though, but I'm just so glad that Natalie Tran from Community Channel is still active via her YouTube channel, which is amazing, and I did have a look at the new videos on YouTube, and if you want to go ahead and check out Natalie Tran's YouTube channel, please do so, and look out for Hi! Whenever you hear the word Hi, that is a very significant um, sound or a signature sound of her YouTube channel. Anyways, I need to go ahead and grab the webcam because we're going to be doing our first tour review for 2022. And thank God it is Sunday, the um, as we say, it, of course, this is the 2nd of January 2022. As I'm making the video, right? so the year is progressing like a photo, and we're heading up towards spring. Obviously, because um, I mean, I mean, we're not really <laughs> technically in spring yet, but overall, it's going to be quite interesting there once we see a very physical change. And we've actually got three Gen 1 T6 products, but we've also got one with that product that actually came from another generation that shouldn't be there. And uh, let me just go ahead and put them straight onto the floor here. Oh, did you see that? That was one of the old products. And strangely enough, I didn't realise it at all. Um, yes, let me just go ahead and I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing here because I'm just, I'm just looking like a kind of like a thing, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yes, let me just go ahead and Right, mind you, put it this way, I'm trying to make my toy views a lot more easier, eh? Huh? Ah, yes. Let's do it. Okay, our first product is a Fifth of Origami British Wall of Collection. Uh, it's a basic mallard duck, um, ready for eating and swimming 12 pack. It costs about 15 pounds. There's the back of the packaging, which oh, <laughs> looks like that. And the packaging is taking the dive though, eh? Because, well, Oh, there's a bit of a fun fact here, eh? And, uh, bread has 0% malnutritional value or nutritional value to ducks, causing you know, them not to seek or to not seek out for their natural, usual food or delicacy, leading to malnutrition. They're omnivores, eating from plants to insects, crustaceans, mollusks, and fish, as you can see right over there. And it does make sense that bread can be bad for ducks, though, as you know, it has not much nutritional value here, eh? But that's all I could say here, eh? Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging. And let's take a look inside. Oh, yeah, here come the duckies. Wah, wah. Alright, I need a shake. Just in case we've got some other products. Actually, other components, actually, more like. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the bread. This is. Very different, and I mean, we've already made bread very similar to the, what we did in Generation 125. Boy, I think, you know, Generation 126 may have some very similar assets to Gen 125, but um, who knows? Um, I've, I've got a funny feeling maybe these vibes may not last that long, but uh, these are very good vibes. Um, Gen 126, obviously, and the design on these, they look quite nice. And it's it's fairly nice having the bread like that. It looks quite light in the way the colours have been, <coughs> you know, created and whatnot. Eh? So, <laughs> it always happens all the time. Every morning, I always get like a freaking sore throat. Uh, but yes, it looks quite nice. And, um, yeah, oh, this one's gone a bit dirty, eh? That's a bit like, it's like a mouldy piece of bread. Crikey's, that is weird! Um, but yes, it does look like a piece of bread. 
Oh, maybe this one's a bit moddy as well. I uh, don't think it's like some sort of alien way. Which is quite rock hard on a bread piece and whatnot. Like, let's take a look at the ducks. And this one's actually a bit differently designed compared to the other ducks I did. Um, I think I did a fire pack there. It was a much bigger duck though. And um, what was actually quite different was that it didn't have that much uh, brown. But it didn't have a colour combination of brown and grey on the body. Uh, but now we have. It's I suppose, eh? It looks good. And there's the other side of it, eh? There's the back side and there's its bum. <laughs> it's just a 2D duck with a 3D sort of design, obviously, eh? It looks quite nice. Looks fairly good. And uh, the wire folded, it's quite nice. There you go, there's the blue speculums on each side of the wings. I'm going to pretty much um, have a look at all of the ducks here and therefore take a look over there. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. That is completely and utterly... Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say here, but this is really, really good. <coughs> I mean, the ducks have got beautiful blue speculums. And I mean, look at that. This is just beautiful. And I think this whole colour combination of brown and grey makes it more unique and a lot much more realistic compared to what we had you know, in the other sets though, before though, when we had other mallard ducks. And I mean, aren't we getting too many mallard ducks? Well, it's okay though, because, well yes we are, but it's alright though, because I can make as many duck themed products whenever I want to, hey. Particularly during spring, oh, sorry that female just assassinated a male. Sorry that was a bit funny, hey? what a naughty girl was that. In fact, let's not fight, shall we, hey? There you go, that's the female here. And the female, that looks pretty nice in terms of the detailing and whatnot. Right? Oh, I think the very tricky part was this tile. Uh, the tile was the very tricky part to detail though. Right? You have to colour it in by tan you know, first, and then you have to colour in brown. Next. There you go, there's the other Malad Duck female. And they do have names as well. This one, of course, is a female. There you go, it says female mallard duck. And the males, most importantly, they also have names. It says male mallard drake duck. Drake being a male duck, obviously. Or maybe a dragon, I don't know. But, there you go, there's the other same thing here as well. Looks pretty nice, I can't digress. I think one gripe for me is just maybe they could have done better with the beak though. They could have coloured in the beak though, you know. Like a brown or grey sort of colourisation, eh? Or maybe black to give it a bit of depth so that the, the thing I've got, I've got a bit more colourisation on the beaks to make themselves more realistic, but sadly I can't have everything in life. It's, everything is all, you know, cheap and nasty. But nevertheless, I think Flip Up tends to be really good at doing, you know, toys which are quite lavishly designed. And actually, I've just spotted something. Look at this. That dunny there hasn't raised that top posture here. <laughs> and I've just sneezed. <laughs> oh, quirkies. And, and oh my goodness me. I don't know what I'm saying here, but let's move on to our next one here. Something a bit springtime-ish. Hey, I'm sneezing. Yes, ow! Again, another sneeze. What a very bad start, eh? Well, who knows? Maybe it'd be good, maybe it'd be bad, I don't know. It's like some type of British Wallet Collection, and um, basic Canada Goose Spring Small Baby Family Fire Pack. Costs about three pounds, and I was originally going to be doing like three water birds in New Year's Eve, but no, I actually decided to go with two because I was running out of ideas, and second, I was also distracted by various open source games, I think, on the computer. Here you go, there's the check here, eh? Ain't that a bit early though for spring? You know, making products and like that and blah blah. Uh, but anyways, let me just go ahead and take a look what's inside. You know, Canadian geese, swans, and ducks, so even coots and more hens. I think they often draw in the water and see guys as well. And uh, I've got a funny feeling I need to draw the cold with. Oh my goodness me, I've got a cold here. Uh, I don't know if I was going to get myself a kick here, but 
I'll be right back then, because I'll be seeing. Uh, I am about to sneeze again, alright? Yeah. Actually, I might drop the whole tissue box or tissue bag. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry if this, this, this video has gone a bit sloppy though. Um, this is something I need to play with. Um, a bag of tissue paper. Oh my goodness me. No, oh, that was a bit too hard for sneezing like that day. And, and I mean, whenever I sneeze so hard like this. Now, all I did at the moment now is not only I've damaged my nose, but I also made it sound like a freaking kazoo. <laughs> okay, so anyways. Without making my nose looking like a freaking kazoo from this pack of Kleenex tissue paper. Okay, so obviously I I got a funny feeling. Let me just go ahead and continue the review without looking like a total fool of myself, eh? There we go. That's a Canada goose with the name like so. And there you go. That is the overall appearance today of a Canada goose. Um, what's better than one? Two, of course. That is good. Over away, and you've also got some goslings. Three baby goslings, that is fairly nice. It's a very simplistic set. There's the other side of here of this goose. Very beautiful. And there it is as well. Looks fairly nice indeed. They've got black tails. That's fairly nice, isn't it, though, eh? Fairly nice stuff indeed. And I mean, let's take a look at the wings, eh, shall we? Because eh? obviously the wings are the more prominent feature as well on the birds and um, they look quite nice when they're swimming look at that just swimming gracefully and let's take a look at the goslings next they look like random Canadian or uh, grey like geese um, babies obviously it's, they've got like a colour combination of yellow and, and brown I think it also happens to the same factor with ducklings I think there you go, that's one of the goblins. Might do another one of those as well. They look quite cute. That's a bit, you know what that actually reminds me of? It looks like one of those Easter sets. It actually does remind me of those Easter themed sets though. Whenever I think of Easter time, there's all baby swing um, goslings. Maybe ducklings swinging by, eh? It doesn't have to be chickens. It can be ducks, geese, or any other birds. I suppose, eh? Maybe penguins as well. <laughs> Maybe like an Easter time thing penguin set. How about that? <laughs> and I'm freezing because I got a freaking cold. I'm just blowing my nose. I don't know how hard I am, but I shouldn't blow my nose too hard, otherwise I got a freaking nose blade over over order, but oh my god. So this video is going to be rough and ready for 2022, but <laughs> I mean that's all I could pretty much do, but I've only got about two Easter Tuck products to do next. And um overall they look quite nice, the um goblins. They look quite cute though. I've also got like a little prominent head feature as well, which is nice. And it's fairly cool to have birds like that. To have little tiny heads as well. Sometimes with a three D effect. And you know what? It makes it quite nice. Indeed. Anyways, let's put them back. And let's move on to something quite Australian. <laughs> it's this one here. It's a flip of origami flatten birds. Australian white ibis trio. Uh, gang tie and bin scut five pack. Three pounds ninety nine or four pounds. Oh, I like that change of prices. Go, baby, go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the. Back of the packaging, it looks like these ibises are squabbling against a rotten piece of apple core, as you can see. Whereas on the front, this ibis is, he's just happy. He's just eating a, a piece of chicken. Maybe he's a cannibal, obviously. <laughs> obviously. And, um, as you know what we often call, you know what we often call white ibises though? We often call them bean chickens or tip turkeys and whatnot today. Let's go ahead and crack this and see what we've got. Oh yes! And let's not forget the food as well! And we've also got like a... 
a piece of chicken drumstick. How cool is that? And we've also got a apple core, which looks like that. And it looks pretty nice. And I mean, it does look like it's been covered in all rottenness. Yeah, but it gives us the effect of being realistically dirty. Um, it's just a toy, really, you know. Right? It's a very nice looking uh, model. Though, right? It has the aesthetics and whatnot. Right? It looks good. Uh, stunning, I mean, it looks great. And we've also got this piece of chicken. Is it turkey? I can't really remember what bird it is, eh? Maybe they're off already after their Christmas dinner. Maybe someone threw away their Christmas turkey drumstick and just threw it straight into the bin, stating that, that, that their Christmas was naughty because they didn't get any presents. Or maybe their dinner was very sloppy because they had a fight. Like those ibises there. And I'm seizing because my nose, I can feel the effects of my nose. Super, super diabolical on my nose. <laughs> and I just can't even pretty much withstand the blocking as of my nose. <laughs> oh my god, there's tons of sneezing. Tons of sneezing in this video, I tell you what, eh? Tons of sneezing. Uh, but, anyways. Let's move on to the Ibises without even being a silly sneezer, obviously. And you know what? Let's take a look what we've got. Okay, so as we can tell by the white Ibis, it's got a black neck, which suddenly looks more like. Is it dark green? That's weird. And if we go to the other side here, it looks like it's got a curved beak. As Ibises do all the time here, it looks very common indeed. And if we flap this bird, eh? You can also see that it's also got a red line on the wings. Not only that, but there's also another prominent feature that I can also see. And it's that black line there. Running from here to there. It actually does represent the realisticness of the bird. There's no other detailing on the other side apart from those black lines which pretty much represent how the bird has been created and this is actually quite nice. I suppose so, you know, it's, it's not too bad whenever I think of these guys being on the menu here of this product A. Eh? And I love the downward curved beak feature. It reminds me of another bird which I can remember the uh, another wading bird but I think it's also called, I think well, Ibises, they're quite a different bird, eh? I think they're called Curlies. Uh, sadly, as you can see, the um, detailing from white to black. It looks like the black ink has infiltrated it on purpose, though. Maybe I was trying to give them a bit of depth, eh? Um, but nevertheless, looks quite nice, and clearly I can see the brown eye as well. If you can see it. And there's the other side of it here as well. Ooh, yeah. And it's not too bad, obviously. Whenever I make products about ibises and bean chickens and whatnot, there you go. It's quite a nice product. You can't go wrong having bean chickens fighting against a piece of apple cores or chicken drumsticks. <laughs> Anyways, last but by no means least is this. And yes, I've actually noticed it's a Gen 125.5 product. This one's actually um, one I actually forgot to review. It's called the Australian Pied Cormorant and uh, Gurnard Fishing Gourmet vs. Silver Gar Swimming Battle 5 Pack or Battle Chase 5 Pack. I've actually forgot to review this uh, just before New Year's Eve started though because obviously um, there you go, there's the back of the packaging which looks like that because it's a Generation 125.5 product A eh? or Gen 1 then one two five got it. I can't remember what I'm saying here, eh? And um there's actually a very interesting feature and there's actually one difference here. If you look at all of the generation one point oh wait, one two six products, there's actually something that I've actually realised that they have in common. So if you look at this, this one says it's just like UK T M PSA Gear Bar 2021 2022 copyright. But on those ones there, they all say quite totally different, eh? Even on the front, they all say Flip Flap UK, All Rights Preserved 2022 Copyright TM or Copyright 2022 TM. 
It's like they've closed it randomly because I was trying to replicate what I did for 2021, but since 2021 is gone, 2022 is about to pretty much change things up. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside this product here. And it's pretty much the last as I'm making this video, eh? But um, I am going to be making more Gen 1, 2, 6 products, eh? And since we've got three new kits in the block, I suppose this is the last, obviously, eh? And we've got some cormorants here. We've got one of the cormorants here, which looks like that. Looks fairly nice. It's completely black on the body here, even on the wings. And the behind as well, but not at the front. Uh, which makes it quite very nice actually though, it looks penguin fired, looks like a penguin that colour eh? As you can see, it's got like a blue and green and yellow colour combination right on the head here. I think the blue green colour combination is literally the eyes. As you can see, and the grey beak which looks quite hooked, obviously. Looks fairly nice, I can't see any bare skin around here. Uh, let's take a look at the Gurnard mix. Which looks quite nice though. I love the colour combinations on this fish. And the Gunars tend to have fins which looks like butterflies I suppose. Eh? They look like butterfly wings. As, as you can see I've made it to look like a realistic Gurnard. I think that's what they often have eh? with these fins. And there's its tail here with blue and brown merging with yellow. And man oh man it looks fairly nice. And there's the eyes here at the front. It looks brilliant. And mind you, it looks so, so awesome in the way it's been detailed. I love the design of it. Possibly a juvenile though, eh? I think it's a blue Gurnard because I think... I think uh, I've already seen Gurnard type fish at a local Chinese um, big store in Birmingham. I think it was called Wingnip. And then we've also got some silver girls. And what? Crikey, look at this. There's no detailing on the wings and also the other half of the body here. So what I'm actually going to do is grab a freaking pencil and um, I'm going to come in and pretty much fix this problem at the moment though, because why do I keep on not thinking about, you know, verbs that don't often get the amount of detailing as they would normally have? Like this here, this is ridiculous man. Freaking weird isn't it though, by just having, you know, toys that just you know, have this amount of detailing, but they just can't have the amount of it from the other side of it here. I mean, this is ridiculous, man. I just can't have the same syndrome every time when I make a video for 2022 and 2021, respectively. But anyways, um, that's the silver gar here. And there's the other side of it as well. And it's also particularly quite sunny as I'm making this video, eh? And strangely enough, as it's quite a sunny day, well, it also means we can pretty much head outside. You know, I've already, I've already been doing a lot of outdoorness already today. And um, yes, that's one of the silver gas here. And I've actually checked outside. I, I don't know if it's wet outside here because we had a stack of rain last year. And um, crikey, so <laughs> it really is quite wet there outside today. Yeah, but there you go. That's one of the other silver gals as well. Looks pretty nice though, whenever I make silver gals. These birds look totally and utterly beautiful in the way they're designed. And there you go, looks really nice indeed. Well, I think that's about it in this whole video of our YouTube, eh? Sorry if this video has gone quite rough and ready, eh? And I'm also glad to see Nyet return via YouTube again, via her channel, Community Channel. And if you want to go ahead and check out on her channel again, please do so by clicking on the link on the description down below. But if you really enjoyed in this very amazing clip that YouTube tour review or first tour review for 2022, maybe it isn't am amazing for you eh, because there are tons of sneezing and blah blah to talk that well. Please give this video a like though. If you feel like you're the opposite, subscribe for more of that videos in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year as we welcome 2022 and bye for now.